my beloved brothers and sisters, good night and happy Sabbath. I am bringing with me greetings from the Pacific Islands, Pacific region. Do you want to receive it? Amen. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 11, it says there, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. We shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Patros, from Cus, from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. We remember, brethren, that the Lord is gathering his people, especially in this closing event of this world's history. The remnant people of God should be recovered, should be gathered in, not only in Africa, not only in China, not only in Europe, not only in South America and North America, as well as in the islands of the sea. I would like to tell you, brethren, that the Pacific region is composed of many islands, island countries. It started from Mongolia, down China, Japan, Korea, Indonesia, Philippines, Papua New Guinea, the Pacific Islands, Australia, and New Zealand. In this region, we have 16 countries where the work is going onwards. In Mongolia, we have one member. In North China, we have 344. South China, we have 319. In South Korea, we have 99. In Japan, we have 25. In Indonesia, we have three missions. The eastern part, we have 45. The northern part, we have 68. In the west, we have 21. Vietnam, we have 145. Philippines, we have 133. And the South Pacific Union Mission, which is composed of Vanuatu, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Fiji, uh, New Caledonia, and French Polynesia, has 285 members. And the last but not the least is Australian Union, which is composed of Australia and New Zealand, which has 342 members. Total, we have 3,027 membership. Let's start in Mongolia. Mongolia is a landlocked country. As we can see there, that Mongolia has no sea seaport. It is locked up with China, Russia, and Kazakhstan. And you know, brethren, this place is very cold country. And this is the typical house of Mongolian. It is made from the skin of the sheep to make them warm. And it has chimney above and they will make some uh, heaters inside. You know, the coldest part in that country is th negative 38 degrees. I was there and very cold. And this is our, this is the local place in Ulaanbaatar, which is the capital of Mongolia. And we have people over there. This is our people in Mongolia. And uh, we have one baptized members, but we have 30 members before who went from us, and we are starting to work with them so that they will come back again. And we have several young people who are studying with us every Sabbath. Now, this, the left side is the new Bible worker, a minister, I should say, and the other one is from uh, Moldova just finished his uh, assignment over there, and this brother received his uh, work in Mongolia. We went there to visit 
uh, this place together with some brethren from uh, Korea to help the work over there. Let's go to South Korean field. South Korea has uh, two uh, big churches, one in Seoul and one in Kyungbuk, which is our union office, our field office is located. This is the headquarters of South Korea. It has office down and above is the church and it has some uh, dormitories down and the kitchen at the back. These are our people. During the visit of Badr Sors Kumar, we have a conference. And you can see here also the ministers who are actively working in Korea. And we prepared four young people to be the successor of the work in Korea. And actually, two of them now are working as one is Bible worker and the other one is the treasurer. They were trained as missionaries. They have seminars for missionary work in South Korea. When Brother Rado uh, Yonita went there, we have a wonderful meeting with the young people. And some young people from Japan also visited during that conference. When Brother Suresh Kumar went there, he had a wonderful meeting with the young people. Young people, uh, the young people there express their problems, their uh, questions to Brother Suresh Kumar, and there was a wonderful conversation with him. This brother is one of the pioneers in interring different Asian countries like Japan, like China, Mongolia, Vietnam, and Taiwan. He's a retired minister. His name is Brother Won Dong Kyu, but he's still very active, and he just entered Taiwan, and he made a contact with uh, Taiwanese people, and he's really inspired to do missionary work outside his country. Let's go to Japan. Japan has two established groups, and we have some, um, some scattered local members also. But the one, these two groups, one in Saitama, and the other one is in Okinawa. In Saitama, our headquarter is located. This is the headquarter. It is uh, built upon the hill. They cut the hill, they build the foundation very strong, and we own this property with plenty of trees beside it. Very beautiful brethren. And down is a creek where a clear water passing down in this creek. This is a wonderful place where our people in Japan meet together during Sabbath and also during conference. These are our people in Japan. Many of them are sisters, and we have more or less four brothers, members in this, uh, in this mission. And you can see there, these sisters in the front, they are more or less um, having good enough aids, but you know, they are very active missionaries. One of them, almost 80 years old, but she's very active in spreading the good news with spreading of literatures, brethren. And she is very active in doing it. And we have three young people over there. Two from Okinawa and one from Saitama. But this sister in the middle was married already and she is now living in, in Korea. Now, let us go to, to China. Due to political issues, I would not present to you the pictures, but I just want to make some summary what is going on in China. China has two unions. The northern part, the northern uh, union, has 344 members. 
and the southern part has 319. And the work in China is going forward. In the northern part, we have so many sisters who are actively working as missionaries. It is easy for sister to, sisters to knock the door because, you know, in this area, uh, police are always looking for missionaries. And for men to knock the door is very dangerous. So our sisters are actively doing this. But our brothers, our brethren missionaries, are doing the follow-up. And in the south, also, the, the situation is a little bit open. We have a permanent church there. But somehow, just some few months ago, there was a problem. Police came in and came to the church. And our brethren uh, were shocked of the situation. And then supposedly we will go there to visit. But they, they told us you cannot come in this time because the political situation is dangerous. Now let's go to uh, the next country, which is Vietnam. Vietnam has borders between Cambodia, Laos, and China. And our work started in the south, in Saigon, before, formerly Saigon. And now it is called Ho Chi Minh City. We have active missionaries over there. We have sister missionaries and also brothers, brother missionaries. And although the country is still under communism, it is really hard to do missionary work also. For the last four years, I was not able to join with them during the Sabbath. You know why? Because police will come and bring you to the jail. So we have, often time we have meeting in the hotel to have Sabbath meeting. And these are our people in, in Vietnam. And during baptism, they constructed a special a baptismal area. It is surrounded by many trees, and it is covered area, so that when we have baptism, nobody can see us. So in this place, many souls were baptized, like this one. And this, another group. And finally, just this year, brethren, the situation in Vietnam changed a little bit. They started to have friendship with the United States of America. And the United States of America told them, open a little bit your religious freedom. And so they agreed and opened it a little bit. And you know, the Jehovah's Witnesses were flocking to Vietnam, the Mormons coming there. Even the president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church went there and to have a public meeting. Almost 3,000 people came and witnessed his public meeting. And I told the brethren, why were we afraid? These relig uh, religious organizations are coming to Vietnam. Why not start? Do publicly the work. So I will show you. This is the result of our activities there in Vietnam. One day when I visit there, I told them, let's go and register the church. Not as a church, as a foundation. It is Health, Education, and Charity Foundation of Vietnam. And we went there. And the government officer, although he cannot speak English, and somebody translated me, was so very kind. And he attended me, and we placed our documents to him, and he studied it. And after four months of investigation, they gave us this permit. And now our foundation has the approval. We are waiting only for the license to operate. And just the last visit in July. I was so very happy, brethren. You know what happened? One day, one Sabbath, I was not there. The police came inside the church while they have services. And everybody was shocked, afraid, trembling. But you know, the police said, 
Don't be afraid. Why? Because I came here because I was told by the officer to examine how true it is that somebody have meeting here as a church. I want to see if it is true. And they said, yes, we have meeting here for the last 15 years. Yes, we know it. And now go to the government and apply for a permit. Everybody were happy, brethren. So the, the next two days after Monday, they went to the government and applied for a permit. And this is the permit, brethren. And the permit was given to them that all our local home churches, because we have five home churches, can meet only in one home church. And this was the first Sabbath meeting that I attended with our people. This is the home church that we have now. And I was there for two Sabbaths. And in the first Sabbath, they worship as the way they were doing. Because nobody gave them instruction. So at the end of the Sabbath, I call all the Bible workers. This is the way how to have Sabbath worship. And do you want to receive a correction? The next Sabbath, we will do it according to the, the way the reform movement is doing. So the next Sabbath, we came back again, and we worship according to the way that we are doing. And these are the people in this worship time. Now, because of this, as we see that the church is registered already with a foundation, we are looking for a place to have a property. So these people, these brethren, went out with me, and we are looking for a property. And finally, we found a place, beautiful place, with a coconut plantation, around half an hectare, full of coconut, full of fruit trees inside it. And it is near the road. It has electricity. It has also water connections. And it will be the future place for Vietnam mission. Now let's go to the Philippines. Philippines is composed of 7,100 islands. It is divided with three main islands. The north one is Luzon, the middle one is Visayas, and the southern part is Mindanao. It is composed mainly of Catholic people. 90% are Catholics. But some are Protestants, Adventists, Baptists, Methodists, and in the southern part, most of them are Muslims. This is our headquarters in the Philippines. This is the Philippine Union office. We have five fields. We have a publishing department, a missionary school, and a primary school. This is our Philippine Union Council members, and this is our PUC Ministerial Committee, and these are our ministers over there, our Bible workers, and this is the missionary school, which is the hub of uh, missionary training in Asia. Brethren from Indonesia, from China, from Korea, from uh, other parts of Asia came there to study and to learn English. And we have a special project there to teach other countries who want to speak English for six months or one year. After one year, they will go home speaking English already. This is the missionary school we have there. And this is the church of the missionary, missionary school. And we have a farm over there to support the students. And uh, we have also uh, plantations of lemon. And at the end of this property, we have a river where we get the water to supply for the farm. And there was a group, there was a young people who, there were young people who graduated there in that missionary school. And they were prepared to become medical missionaries, coal porters, and Bible workers. 
In the other part of this property, we have the primary school, from kindergarten to, to uh, grade six. And this is the covered court in this property. And during the graduation of the primary school, where Brother Selva was there together, and our people in the Visayan region, Bible workers and ministers, and our brethren, Bible workers and ministers, and lay missionaries in the south, in Mindanao. Brother Dragan Ivanov went there to have a medical seminar, and Brother Dragan Ivanov is planning to have a sanitarium in the Philippines, and it will be the center of medical works in the Pacific. And also, in this place, the Philippine Union Conference is planning to have a tertiary education to offer for our young people as well as for another countries. When Brother Selba went there, he made a seminar on Christ and righteousness, and he was able to baptize a group of elite people who are working in the government, who are working in the companies, as well as they have their own businesses. And recently, a brother from Germany donated some amount to buy a property in the Philippines. This is the property that was bought, and this will be the new Philippine Union Conference site. We started to build the pastoral house. There will be two pastoral houses and an, a union building in this area. Now let's go to Indonesia. Indonesia has three missions. It has 18,307 islands. 18,307 islands. And one of the islands is North Sulawesi, which is the lone Christian area. When you go to this place, you will, be, you will see this um, statue of Jesus Christ. It means that this area is the lone Christian place in Indonesia. It is heavily Muslim country. And this is our church in Jakarta and our people in Jakarta also. And we have a baptism in this place. And when Brother Peter went there, he had a seminar on, on um, prophecy and leadership. And we went to on the other side of Indonesia, which is in Manado, which is the headquarter of the eastern part of Indonesia. This is the seminar we have there. And we decided to divide Indonesia into three parts. This is the delegates of the, east, of the northern part of Indonesia. And this is the delegates of the eastern part of Indonesia. And these are the delegates of the western part of Indonesia. Last July, Brother Paul and I went to Indonesia and we have a seminar for Sabbath school. And there was a pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church who came there and he was, he was very interested in our church. And he's now studying with us. Soon he will be baptized. And this is during the seminar in one of the places in Indonesia. And one brother in Indonesia opened a Facebook account about the Sabbath school in Indonesian language. And he has around 6,000 followers. And one of them who contacted him is this person. He was contacting this brother for the last two years, and he had communication. And finally, he asked, what is the difference between reform and Seventh-day Adventist? And he started to give Bible study in Facebook. And finally, when I visit there, he said, Brother Roly, shall we go to this place and to follow up this interested soul? So I went there, brethren. This is the brother who is interested with us. And 
I went to their place, maybe three hours from Jakarta, and we have several interested people aside from this family. They are now sending tithes to our headquarters in West Indonesian Mission. They have a special program in West Indonesia, or East Indonesia. They have health medical missionary work, and one big Baptist church received our medical missionary work. You know these people at the back with blue uh, dress? They were Baptist people, and they received us. And these are our people who manned this program. During the night, they have seminars on herbal medicine, and in the day, they have practical consultation with the people and teaching them how to prepare medicine. And they culminated their program with cooking demonstration. Almost 300 people came in this program. So I arrived in the middle part of this, of this program, and one of the doctors working in this place helped us and brought us to the provincial, um, provincial doctor. And this doctor is Seventh-day Adventist church member, and he told us, why is it that you are doing medical presentation to Baptist church? Why not in the Seventh-day Adventist church? And we, we told him, because Seventh-day Adventist church are not inviting us. She said, if you come back again, I'll be the one who will bring you to the Adventist church and help you to make medical missionary work in our church. Now let's go to Australia. Australian Union has two countries, Australia and New Zealand. We have here New South Wales Field, West Australian Field, Victoria Tasmanian Field, South Australian Mission, Queensland Field, and New Zealand Field. Our headquarter is located in Schofields in Sydney. And this is the building. The upper portion is the, the church, and down is the offices. And also, we have a convention area, a camp meeting area in Elim Heights. We have a beautiful place for conventions, for, for youth congress, for reorganizations. And this is a very peaceful area in nature, and this is the church. And uh, we have a reorganization meeting last 2013. And uh, during also last December, we have Youth Congress, and they choose to have a wilderness wandering for three days. They sleep in the, in the woods, Somebody brought food there in the area. And uh, during morning, mo morning time and evening time, we have worship in, in nature together. We brought our camps, our, our tents, and sleep there in, in nature. And it was tradies, wilderness wandering. So many young people joined with that, with that program. In Australia, the most effective missionary work is a cooking class. We can see here in Schofield Church, every year we have program in uh, making cooking class, and 70 to 60 to 70 people are regularly attending this cooking class. They prepared menu and special um, organic and vegan menu was presented during this cooking class. Now, let's go to the South Pacific Union mission. It is composed of Fiji, Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, Samoa, uh, New Caledonia, and French Polynesia. In November 2012, all the leaders of these missions came together in Vanuatu to make some, some, um, some caucus, to have some understanding. 
how to create the South Pacific Union mission. And finally, it was organized when Brother Silva went there in Australia. And since that time, the South Pacific Union mission was established. The president that was elected came from Australia. The vice president came from Papua New Guinea the treasurer from Fiji, and the secretary from Prince Polynesia. It is a unique kind of organization, and we are still uh, studying how it will be very effective in doing this. So this is the map of uh, Fiji. We have three churches over there and one uh, local group, and it is the place of one of the purest water in the world, in this mountain. The spring of this, uh, of this pure water came from this mountain. And this is the capital city of, of, uh, of Fiji. And most of the people there uh, wanted to eat taro. This is their staple food. And during our visit, we have baptism over there and uh, you see here this are, these are our young people and we have a special Lord's Supper and a foot washing after the baptism. We found out a place for the headquarter of Fiji and this is the land we had already purchased it and we are waiting only for some funds to build the church. Now let's go to Vanuatu. We have five areas that have established church. And the headquarter is found, is located in uh, Port Vela. And during our visit, this church was uh, inaugurated. And instead of cutting the ribbon during the inauguration, we use the, the leaves of the coconut to start the inauguration of this church. And all our people were very happy. And these are our young people in Vanuatu. So let's go to Solomon Islands. This is one of the youngest mission in the Pacific region. This is our, these are our people. And we have baptism over there. And recently, uh, Solomon Islands was attacked by a typhoon and a flooding after it. And our people's property, houses, was partly destroyed. So our people in Australia sent some relief. And after that also, we have some tools for gardening. These are our sisters having a choir, and our Bible workers working in Solomon Islands. Let's go to uh, Prince Polynesia. Prince Polynesia has many islands also, and it has one, two, three, four, five, six places that has organized groups and churches. In the main island, which is uh, Papi Iti, we have two churches, one in the north and one in the south. French Polynesia is a beautiful country. It has beautiful beaches and uh, pristine mountains, beautiful mountains. And we have also uh, brethren over there who are very kind and very hospitable. Brother Adrian Finaro went there to help this field, and we had a wonderful public meeting. And after that public meeting, Brother Adrian Finaro uh, baptized some souls over there. And after that meeting, they brought me to an island which is called Maupiti Island, and they asked me to conduct a public meeting in this place. We had one week public meeting, and after that meeting, we have a baptism of 
three souls. After some few days, they brought me to another island which is called Wahini Island. We have a developed church over there, and this is the church. And this is the minister's hotel. Uh, it is very close to the sea. And we have also another public meeting in this place for one week. And at the end of the public meeting, we introduce how to prepare soya milk and also how to prepare tofu. And also, many Adventists and uh, neighbors in this area went there to join with us. And in the last day, we introduced how to prepare herbal medicine. And the people, our people were very happy. So the last place is New Caledonia. Caledonia is a French-speaking country. It is a beautiful country also. And uh, our people speak French, and also they have local language. Since in this place, they don't have a church, so at the back of the house of a brother, they make uh, some, like a tent, and they have worship every Sabbath. So in one of our visits, we have baptism. And after that, they brought me to another island, which is called Mari Island. And in this place, we have a house of a brother that was lent to us for a church. Every Sabbath, they use this place for worship. And in this visit, we have some uh, seminar on organic farming. So as I look around, there are many vacant areas, and they don't plant vegetables. They, they buy vegetables in the market, and they don't have vegetables in the yard. So I think to myself, why not teach these people how to have organic gardening. So we started to prepare some garden, and the Lord bless us and give us idea how to prepare some pesticides, organic pesticides, as well as organic um, insecticides. May the Lord bless us, brethren, that the work in this island, Pacific Islands and Pacific countries will go forward and I ask your prayer that the work in this place will be blessed by the Lord. May the Lord bless us.